The question I have for Mrs. Loda is this. Uh, two years ago, you and your husband were very big supporters of Mr. Roy. Now you are running against him. What has changed in the last two years to lead you to this point? Mrs. Loda, you have two minutes to answer Mr. Miller's question. Go ahead. Well, number one, Tritown Plaza. That was a big issue two years ago, and nothing came, came around because of that. Another reason is lack of communication. Uh, I, I've seen it with the Board of Education. Um, I've talked to people going door to door. They say they email Mr. Roy several times. They don't get responses. The whole business with 98 Bank Street. Um, if you're, you're planning to sell a building that central office is in, you should be communicating with central office. And that really didn't happen outside of asking for a walkthrough. And that, that's a big issue. Um, I just don't understand uh, the whole problem. This whole 98 Bank Street is, is a serious problem, and that's another issue. I mean, we've got three buildings in town that, that are going to be empty. Well, 98 Bank Street isn't, but 98 Bank Street, the problem with that is they've got a tenant there. And the powers that the be at the time, they gave that away for practically nothing for the lease, I mean, to Valley Health. And, more power to them. I mean, who wouldn't take a deal like that? You're paying basically a dollar seventy cents a square foot in commercial building when the average is seven to fifteen dollars uh, a square foot, and they're getting it for practically nothing. And why wasn't that taken into consideration when they came up with that lease? Because it would have probably taken care of the expenses that the town is paying now. But what about the expenses of the community center? We're paying a thousand dollars a month just for oil. That's been sitting there for ten years, and what is being done about it? Nothing. So to have a study group on just 98 Bank Street when you've got a situation with a tenant with a lease for 30 years, what are you going to do with that lease? I mean, who's going to buy that property? And at their meeting, I mean, the, the property is assessed at two point, I mean, I'm sorry, $1.2 million. And there was talk about selling it for $50,000. I mean, that's insanity. So, I mean, there's a lot of issues as to why I am no longer supporting Mr. Roy. Okay, thank you. Mr. Miller, you get a uh, one-minute rebuttal. Go ahead. Um, I really have no rebuttal because I simply asked Mrs. Loder her opinion, <laughs> so I'm not really sure what I can rebut, Okay. to be quite honest with you. Appreciate the honesty. Uh, I, I have a follow-up question. I can talk for a minute if you'd like. be a problem. It threw us for a loop there. Uh, I guess my follow-up question, uh, I caught uh, the last part of there. Uh, for Mr. Roy, you'll uh, have one minute to answer. Is there talk about selling 98 Bank Street for $50,000, I think Mrs. Loda just said? Yeah, and that's interesting because, um, you know, we're, we're just chatting at the, at the meeting and there was no concrete um, motion or anything like that to sell 98 Bank Street for $50,000. Uh, the point is, we don't know what we could get for 98 Bank Street, and we, it could be anywhere from 50000 to 250000 We don't know. So that is what part of the next process, is to find out what we can get for that, that property. And uh, what I'm going to do, what I've asked is my uh, economic development director, who is also uh, involved in commercial real estate, to give us a figure of what that <coughs> building might be worth. Uh, so I think that's what the next step needs to be, so that we can know what we can get for, for 98 Bank Street. Fifty thousand dollars was just thrown at us as kind of you know we don't know what we're going to be getting. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Your second question should be directed at Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy then has two minutes to answer your question. My question's a little lengthy, so bear with me, please, while I ask it. Um, since budget year 2007-2008 to the uh, budget now, we've seen an increase in our mill rate of 1.82 mills. During that time, we've had a drop of about 1.3 million in state funding, and at the same time, we've had an increase in town expenses of 1.8 million for a budgetary gap of 3.157 million. The question I have for Mr. Roy and again, I'm going to refer back to a comment that he made to the Valley Gazette on October 19, 2009, when he stated that selectmen need to work with town departments in sticking to three- and five-year budget plans because of uncertain economic times. I think the numbers that I just read would agree with Mr. Roy's statement. The question I have to him as a member serving on that board of selectmen with 
uh, 10 days to go until the election. At what point do you plan to present us these plans and explain to us what your goal is to keep our budget in line? Mr. Roy, you have two minutes to respond to that question. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, first of all, um, yes, I, I did make those statements. I, I won't deny it when I took office. But also when I took office, I found a multitude of issues that needed to be addressed. Uh, and the first time I sat, stood at a budget meeting, I had a whole list of items that needed to be addressed. Communication system at the police station, the police station roof, public works roof, boiler at the community center, boiler at public works, boiler and steam traps at 98 Bank Street, vehicles at public works, skylight at the community center, deteriorating roads. Unfortunately, those, some of those issues had to be addressed before we could come up with a three or five year plan because they were at the point where we needed to take care of these uh, issues immediately. We tried to do that. Uh, it didn't quite make it in the spring. Uh, as you know, recently we've been able to move a few of these things forward. Uh, I did, was able to receive a grant for the uh, roof at the police station. Um, and we are also working to change some of our infrastructure within the, the town buildings as, as far as lighting and that sort of thing so that we can get back online so we can figure out where we could be if we didn't have all these issues to deal with uh, as soon as I came into office. Okay, thank you for that answer. Mr. Miller, you have a one minute rebuttal. Go ahead. To be honest, Eugene, I'm not even 100% sure how to rebut what Mr. Roy said because he didn't answer the question that I presented to him. Um, you know, being the first selectman of this town is a serious position because the town has serious concerns. Mr. Roy just named off several of them, and I commend him for taking care of those issues. But unfortunately, the position of first selectman is not one where you can just focus on one or two things. This is a $52 million operation. You're going to have to multitask. And the fact that he made a commitment two years ago to come up with these plans, and here we are 23 months later, and these plans have not been presented, and that's the only answer that he can give, to me, it is extremely disappointing as a resident and as a fellow member of the Board of Selectmen. Um, there have been many times where myself and, and, and John Conroy have stepped up to help Mr. Roy. Had we known this was the case, we would have been more than happy to help him put these plans in place. Okay, thank you. Uh, follow up to Mr. Roy. Uh, Mr. Miller brought up twice now the three to five year budget plans. Uh, when are you going to present those plans to the Board of Selectmen? If you, if you listen to, to what I said, that now that we have gotten to this point where we have taken care of these issues, now at the point where I think that we can really be starting to think about a three or five year plan because we've gotten over these large obstacles, these large hurdles that needed to be dealt with before you can start figuring out where your plan is going to go from here. Okay, thank you for that answer. In the next round, uh, Mr. Roy gets to ask the questions. Uh, Mr. Roy, would you please ask the question you prepared for Mrs. Loda? Thank you. Mrs. Loda, after almost 14 years as a member of the Board of Education, you stated to me in April of this year, in the presence of another Board of Education member, that your priority was to remain as a member of the Board of Education. Why in the day following the party caucus, when the Democratic Party did not endorse you for another term on the Board of Education, did you announce that you decided to seek the position of first selectman rather than continuing to run for a position on the Board of Education? Okay, Mrs. Loda, you have two minutes to answer that question. Go ahead, please. Well, I don't need two minutes, actually. I told Mr. Roy in April that, uh, yes, I would have liked to be back on the Board of Education, but if I wasn't going to be on the ticket, that I was going to plan on running as a petitioning candidate. He was well aware of that long before the caucus. Needless, I did wait to the caucus to see the outcome. I, wasn't, I didn't, you know, go down and file papers until the day after, but it was well known long before that what my intentions were. Okay. Thank you for that answer. Mr. Roy, you have a one-minute rebuttal. Uh, I, I would think that uh, if one were interested in being on the Board of Education, 
you would have either primaried for a Board of Education seat or ran, uh, as you are, as a uh, unaffiliated or independent Democrat for the Board of Education seat, if that's what you really wanted to do. I never said right, that. Let me, I'll, I'll ask you, I have a follow-up question. I'm going to direct it at you, Mrs. Loda, uh, and you have one minute to respond if our timekeeper is ready. Uh, obviously, continuing this thread here, uh, you had said that if you if you weren't on the, the BOA ticket, you were going to be a petitioning candidate. The, the obvious question here, is there sour grapes in, in the run that you're doing? No, not at all. I mean, this is it's a long time ago. Uh, um, yeah, please, please. Go right ahead. I mean, that's, that was, I had the right to make that decision, and I did it. And I'd stand by it. Okay. Thank you.